Hello, thank you for joining me today to learn about Reax's medicinal chemistry. In this session, I will show you how to use the main features and will demonstrate a couple of workflows. But before that, I'd like to go through some slides to introduce you to the content and organization behind Reax's medicinal chemistry. Figuring out the interactions between substances, targets, and bioactivity can be very tedious and time consuming because it involves collecting, organizing, normalizing, and comparing data from different sources. Well, Reaxis Medicinal Chemistry is all about connections between the bioactivity of compounds and their targets and helps you choose the right compound to develop during your preclinical work. Reaxis Medicinal Chemistry gives you access to millions of compounds so that you can explore the pharmacological effect of selected compounds and investigate the targets with which the compound series interacts. This can be used for the assessment of new drugs, compound repurposing, lead identification, and lead optimization. We extract and index the chemical structure, name, code, and synonym of a compound. Also target information, in vitro assays like binding second messenger and cell-based assays, animal models of disease, pharmacokinetic and ADME properties, and also toxicity and safety. Reaxis medicinal chemistry is modeled after Reaxis, which I'm showing right here with its deeply indexed data and unique organization and functionality. RMC was originally released over a year ago with a different user interface and was redesigned and re-released in April of this year. And here is what the new user interface looks like. There is a combined interface for customers who license both products. Those with both products have the ability to view additional property data like physical properties, reactions, the synthesis planner, and additional literature. The data in RMC is available as a flat file and through an API and can also be integrated with your in-house database. Along with the redesign of the user interface, we also added more content. Now the information is coming from over 90,000 patents and over 5,000 journals starting from 1980, comprised of over 230,000 articles and includes over 9,000 druggable targets. This makes RMC the most comprehensive medicinal chemistry solution on the market. RMC contains over 5 million compounds and over 25 million biological results, and this is the result of RMC's integration with Aureus and GoStar. There are some unique features to help you visualize all of this data. The heat map, for example, enables you to select different criteria for the X and Y axis in your results table so that you can look at, for example, compounds and targets or bioassays and target species. The values given for the bioactivity are PX values. The PX values are calculated from the data so that the data can be normalized and compared across publications and bioassays. The PX values are useful for searching patents, where affinities are usually displayed as ranges and very difficult to compare. And the PX values ensure that end users retrieve all of the affinity data that they're searching for without the need to be an expert on all parameters and units used in publications. And finally, the PX values facilitate analysis using third-party tools. After obtaining the data that you need, you can export it in a variety of formats for use with other applications, such as Spotfire and Accelerus Pipeline Pilot. So now we'll move on to the demo portion of the session. And the first one is going to be about um, what is known about my substance of interest. So I'm just going to do a quick overview to show you what kind of results you could expect to find in RMC. And then the second one will be about what are the most potent NER1 agonists with the lowest calculated PSA value. And the third one is which substances are selective on TRPA1 or TRPV1. For the demo, I will be using this interface, which is the one that combines Reaxis with Reaxis Medicinal Chemistry. So if you have just Reaxis Medicinal Chemistry, you will not see the query themes for reactions, the Reaxis tree, or for the physical data. The first search is for a compound known as EP128265. So I'll start by clicking the substance's query theme. 
I can draw the structure using a variety of structure editors or just use create structure template from name where you can enter a name or other identifier to obtain the structure and click search the available data is shown here but those with RMC by itself will not have the link for physical data I'll click show details to display everything the drug likeness link displays some calculated information like uh, Lipinski rules, polar surface area, and rotatable bonds. For in vitro efficacy, notice the column headers for the data, parameter, unit, target name, cells, bioassay. Now this is the quantitative results. Notice the qualitative results are shown below. These show that testing was done, and this one was looking for the stimulation of a target, but the numerical data was not given. Here's the in vivo animal model, qualitative information, pharmacokinetic quantitative results, and toxicity and safety quantitative results. You can get the profile of a target hit by viewing the heat map. This is showing targets along the top and substances on the side. Mouse over the name to see the structure or click here to display the structures. The colors correspond to the PX values, and this legend shows that the higher values are the reds, oranges, and yellows. The gray values um, denote that there is only qualitative information for that target. Change the view of the data by clicking one of these links. I'll change targets to cell lines. To view the information for a data point, click the link. Now this is the filtered view showing only that data point for that compound. If you want to return to the heat map, click the breadcrumb. To again see all of the data for that substance, just click here. Demo number two, what are the most potent NER1 agonists with the lowest calculated polar surface area? This time I won't include a structure in the query, so I'll start with the medicinal chemistry query theme. Here you see the bioactivity data form. This form, as with any of the forms in Reaxis, displays only a fraction of the available searchable fields. To add a field for a target name, click Add Remove Fields. I'll scroll to find the field and then add it to the form. And then look up the name of the target. You can also just type it in directly into the field, but I usually use the lookup link so that I can see what else is in there. And search. The heat map is the default results view from the bioactivity query form. Before we look at that, I'd like to point out something. This one is telling us that NER1 activation was noticeably reduced in the presence of this compound. And since we want agonists, I can specify this by using a field, putative action on target, and selecting agonist. Search again. View the most active ones at the top by sorting 
in descending order. Or filter by limiting to a PX range. Now use the analysis view to see the relationships between polar surface area and activity. So I'm just going to click on these bars and you can see that when I click on the activities here it changes what I'm seeing on the other side for the polar surface area. And I can sort this so that I can see the lowest polar surface values at the top. And this will give me an idea of which compounds have the lowest polar surface area and highest activity. Demo number three. Which substances are selective on transient receptor potential A1 and V1? Start by using the bioactivities form. Type in or look up the target name. I'll type it in this time and use a wildcard so I retrieve both targets. So I'm only interested in these two. So I can delete columns. or limit to certain columns. And here's A1 and V1. Now you can use the heat map to get a quick look at which compounds are selectively active on one, but not the other. Sort one of the columns in descending order. This will, of course, affect the other column, too, since the substances are being rearranged. Now you can see some substances active on A1, but with a low affinity to V1. And if you're interested in these two substances, you can just click on the rows. and then just limit it to these two substances. And then of course you can export the data from there. So that's it for today's session. Thank you for joining me. If you have any questions, feel free to write to me at c.fleming at elsevier.com. Thank you.